Vida. So I'm gonna start recording the class. Uh, today we're gonna start. Now this chapter is gonna take us two weeks. Why? Because it usually take two classes, but the thing is yesterday we have our, um, our forum. So we took one hour from this week and then the next week is gonna be almost the same thing. So we're gonna take only one, one, one hour. So it's gonna uh, one hour from this week and the other hour from the other week. So uh, that's why it's gonna take two weeks, this uh, chapter. Okay, so chicos, acuérdense que en aquel entonces, Eh, se estaba dando lo de Napoleón Bonaparte. He take over different countries. And also, and also uh, over here in America, it was happening all the uh, revolution. Simón Bolívar and uh, José San Martín was helping some countries to get rid of the colonialism. So there were several things going on during those days and also, Remember, uh, the uh, it was happening the uh, the uh, industrial revolution also. But the thing is, for the industrial revolution, they need a raw material. Necesitan materia prima. Y de qué otra manera es que ir a conseguir la materia prima ya sea en América o conseguirla en en India. Y como ven aquí en el mapa que ustedes ven que estoy enfrente que está pintado con diferentes colores, quiere decir que cada color representa a un, una, una, un país o una nación que fue a buscar su territorio o, una, o a colonizar algo para poder sacar materia prima y enviarlo. Por ejemplo, Inglaterra creo que se dominó de esta área, área de Canadá, área de la India, eso lo sabemos, y también colonia fue colonia, eh, Australia fue colonia inglesa, como ejemplo. ¿ya? Eh, China también dominó, digo, Japón dominó a China, Corea y ciertas áreas por aquí. Y así, hay varios ejemplos. ¿Por qué? Porque en aquel entonces, después de lo que hizo Napoleón, se separaron, la, eh, vino lo que el Congreso de, de Viena, ¿se acuerdan del Congreso de Viena? Y entonces se, se redistribuyó, se reorganizó, pero de una manera que no, muchos países no estuvieron de acuerdo. Entonces ahí apareció lo que es el famoso nacionalismo. Y colonial empires, Todo eso se dio durante esos años. Ok, it says nationalism is the devotion and loyalty to one's country. It was powerful in the 80s hundred. It fueled the independence movement in Latin America. As this new nation emerged, the map of Europe once again changed. Todo otra vez cambió nuevamente el mapa de Europa y se convirtieron en estado, por ejemplo, Italia, que es el señor, el señor, esto creo que es italiano, este señor Pinto, creo que tiene descendencia italiana, Pinto, o español, disculpa, disculpa, Pinto, tú me dijiste que era española. Bien. Entonces, Italia se, se, se partió en diferentes estados. Ellos le llamaban nation states, diferentes estados. ¿Ok? Dice, en the early 1800, many people conquered, conquered by Napoleon, reject uh, resented French domination. They wanted to unite with other who share their language, belief, and customs. Nationalists supported the idea of independent nation states. Y todos se convirtieron en pequeños estados. Self-governing self countries made of people with common cultural background. Italia estaba dividida en diferentes estados. Y los primeros que se unieron y formaron una nueva nación fue Italia y también fue Alemania. Vamos ahora primero con Italia. ¿Qué sucedió en Italia? El mapa como estaba dividido comenzó. ¿Quién comenzó esa unión? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? Porque en aquel entonces en el norte se estaba dando unos movimientos. Austria quería invadir esta área de aquí de, de Italia. Y entonces el reino de Sardinia, Sardinia, no Narnia, no es Narnia, Sardinia. 1858 eh, se organizaron para combatir a, a Austria y después se unieron ciertas ciertos otros estados y se formó una, un solo bloque que era Italia, ¿ok? In the early 1800, Italy was divided into separate states. Nationalism grew more and more, and Italy embraced the idea of unifying as one country. 
when Camilo de Cabur became prime minister of Sardinia, Cabur modernized Sardinian's army and fought against the Aus Austria, Austrian from the north. Uh, the other Italian states united with Sardinia in 1860. That year, Giuseppe Garibaldi overthrew the government of Sicilia, and a few months later, Garibaldi and Cabur joined together, and in 1861, Italy became a united kingdom. Ten years later, Rome became the capital of that, that unification of Italy. Now, unification of Germany. Se estaba dividido en varios estados, chicos. El estado más grande era el reino de Prusia, y él fue que comenzó a reunir a todos. Okay. Okay. Spirit of nationalism grew among German people. Prussia was the largest of the German states. Austria was its closest rival. In the 1860s, Prime Minister Otto von Bismarck be, be, began the plan of create a unified German under Prussian domination, built a strong army and won wars against Denmark and Austria. The German Empire was proclaimed in January 1871. The King Wilhelm, Wilhelm of Prussia became emperor, ruling over all German states except Austria. Okay, y ahí se unió. Nuevamente, ahí se unió entonces, se formó la, el país de, de eh, Alemania. Okay, let's, we are halfway, we are halfway of this chapter. So, now we are going to watch the same story that I just told you. Now, I'm going to project a video that talks about the same story. Where is it? Uh, this is Italian. Let's talk about Italian first and then the German later on. Oh. Since the fall of Rome, the Italian peninsula was divided among a lot of independent states. Besides the rough geographic position, there was some debate as to whether they really shared a similar culture. Nevertheless, there were no real calls for unification. That is, until Napoleon came along. When he invaded Italy, he created the Kingdom of Italy in the north, harking back to the old constituent kingdom of the Holy Roman Empire. However, when he was defeated, Italy reverted back to independent state. Simply put, there was the ultra-conservative Bourbon-controlled Kingdom of Naples in the south, the theocratic Papal States in the centre, the Austrian Empire directly controlled the northeast and had client states in the centre, Parma, Tuscany and Modena. So the only genuinely independent state was the Kingdom of Sardinia, aka Piedmont in the northwest. And that's how it was until the revolutions of 1848 swept across Europe. In Milan and Venice, revolutionaries rose up against the Austrians, Sicilians fought for independence from Naples, and in Rome they declared a republic. The Roman Republic was led by Giuseppe Mazzini, who founded a revolutionary group, the Young Italians, and had been launching insurrections for years. However, within a short space of time, the rebellions had been crushed. Austrians reconquered the Northeast, the Bourbon Neapolitans crushed the Sicilians, and French troops were sent into Rome to reinstate the Pope, and they remained in the city for some time. This, the first Italian War of Independence, therefore failed, but it demonstrated that the new King of Sardinia, Victor Emmanuel II, would lead the unification movement, but he desperately needed a powerful ally. So in the 1850s, with his Prime Minister Cavour, Victor Emmanuel decided to send troops to Crimea to fight the Russians alongside the British and French in hopes of gaining an ally. Eventually, Napoleon III came to their aid. Besides looking to improve his prestige and weaken the Austrian Empire, he had nearly been killed by an Italian revolutionary in 1858, so he hoped to curb this activity. The Franco-Piedmont alliance against Austria was cemented when Victor Emmanuel offered to cede Nice and Savoy to France in exchange for their support. They attacked Austria in April 1858, starting the Second War of Italian Independence. Together with the Central Italian states who had united and ousted their leaders, they emerged victorious against the Austrians within just a few months. However, Victor Emmanuel and Cavour were angered with the French for making peace with the Austrians before they got all they wanted. Nevertheless, Lombardy was next, and the central states then voted suspiciously overwhelmingly in favour of joining Piedmont. Shortly afterwards, a Sicilian revolutionary, Francesco Crispi, persuaded Giuseppe Garibaldi to launch an invasion of Sicily. Garibaldi was a famed revolutionary who had fought around the world, so he was able to recruit a thousand volunteers, the Red Shirts, and gain limited support from the British. He set sail for Sicily in mid-1860, and once he landed, with the help of some local recruits, fought his way north. 
He eventually entered Naples in September, welcomed by crowds, and hoped to push on to Rome. However, Victor Emmanuel, who had just defeated Papal States and annexed Umbria, prevented him from doing so because French troops were still stationed in the city. So Garibaldi handed over his southern conquests to Victor Emmanuel and the Kingdom of Italy was proclaimed in 1861. But they still lacked two notable cities, Venice and Rome. Fortunately for the Italians, Bismarck of Prussia was leading German unification. In 1866, he declared war on Austria in order to become the greater German power. Italy joined in the war against Austria, but their disjointed army was soon defeated. Meanwhile, the Austrians had sought to keep the French neutral. So to make sure of this, they agreed to give them Venice, and this in turn was handed over to Italy. But the Italians would have to wait until 1870 to capture Rome. The Prussians, still trying to unify Germany, declared war on France starting the Franco-Prussian War. Their speedy gains forced the French to withdraw their troops garrisoned in Rome, finally allowing the Italians to move in. Rome was then declared the capital of the Kingdom of Italy, but the new nation faced a lot of problems. Only a very small number of the population spoke the standardized language, the north and the south were economically and culturally very different, brigands in the south attacked northerners, and after land reforms, millions of people emigrated. On the global scene, Italy would go on to create its own empire, but along with Germany, they greatly upset the balance of power in Europe and the alliances created as a result of this would help start World War I. Okay, this was the unification of Italy. Now this was the unification of um, Germany. If this machine let me show you that. It doesn't wanna, as usual, uh, German unification is right here. For centuries, modern-day Germany was divided amongst hundreds of states, which were somewhat united in the Holy Roman Empire. German-speaking Austria was the most powerful state in the Holy Roman Empire, however, during the Reformation, their control over the German states dwindled. Also, in the 18th century, Prussia became a kingdom, expanded its borders, and became a dominant power in Europe. Then, during the Napoleonic Wars at the beginning of the 19th century, Napoleon created the Confederation of the Rhine out of his conquests in Germany. As the war progressed, German speakers began to feel a sense of unity and Eventually, when Napoleon was on the retreat, Germans from all states, particularly students in the Lutso Corps, began to volunteer to fight for the Prussians against France. In the wake of the Napoleonic Wars, a German confederation was formed. However, it was ineffective at stopping the rivalry between Prussia and Austria, and calls for unification began to grow stronger. For instance, in 1832, there was a large festival at Hamsbach Castle supporting unification. In 1833, the Prussians formed the Zollverein, a customs union which gradually expanded and tied the economies of some German states together and away from Austria. But the calls for unification as well as liberal reforms grew louder and eventually caused the revolutions of 1848 which spread across Germany. These revolutions prompted liberals to meet in the Frankfurt Assembly and push for a united German constitution. They also tried to take over the conduct of the war which broke out between Prussia and Denmark over Schleswig-Holstein, but Frederick William IV of Prussia refused and signed an armistice with the Danes, allowing them to retain the disputed region. But in the Frankfurt Assembly, the debates continued on how Germany should be united. Some, mainly Catholics in the South, supported a greater Germany under the leadership of Austria, while Protestants in the North supported a lesser Germany under Prussia. Those supporting Prussian leadership won the vote and offered Frederick William IV the crown of Germany, but the conservative king refused a crown given to him by liberals. Meanwhile, the rebellions had subdued when many German states adopted their own constitution. Fast forward to 1861 and King Wilhelm I became King of Prussia and he appointed Bismarck as his chancellor. Bismarck was quick to advocate that Prussia expand through blood and iron, but wanted to make sure that it remained authoritarian. In 1864, he took advantage of a constitutional crisis in Denmark and declared war, hoping to claim the disputed region of Schleswig-Holstein, and with the help of Austria, the two states occupied the region. Bismarck then used the disputes in the region to start a war with Austria in 1866 and forced the German states to divide in support of either side. With the help of the newly unified Italy, the Prussians emerged victorious and united the northern states into the northern German confederation, with the authoritarian Prussian 
Prussian leaders in control, making the Prussians the dominant force in the unification for Germany. The new confederation had only existed for a few years before disputed succession in Spain worsened their relations with France. Bismarck was able to provoke the French to declare war first in 1871, which gave him the support of the independent German states. The Germans crushed the French in battle and, in the Palace of Versailles, proclaimed Wilhelm I the new Emperor of Germany. The new empire took Alsace-Lorraine from the French and went on to become the dominant power of continental Europe. They, along with the new Kingdom of Italy, greatly upset the balance of power. So Bismarck spent the following decades trying to prevent Germany from being encircled by their powerful neighbours and, against his will, helped create a German empire. Bismarck also consolidated his power domestically by diminishing the authority of the Catholic Church during the Culture Camp. Okay, guys, with this video, we are managing live. Hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah, now with, with this video, we are halfway, we are halfway of this chapter about nationalism and capital empire, okay? And uh, remember, next week we're gonna have uh, test number one. It's gonna be on Monday. Okay, so get ready. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the topic. It's gonna be. I think we didn't, we didn't, we didn't uh, add it in the exam. One topic that I don't remember what's the topic, but there's one that. Is it belongs to the second trimester that we didn't use it, so it's gonna be that one. Let me see. Let me see if I have it. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you. I know one of those is gonna be uh, the uh, industrial revolution. The other one is gonna be. Well, it's gonna be so. Uh, so that way you're gonna be ready for the industrial revolution. Uh, Excuse me, industrial revolution is going to be one of those. Uh, the age, the age of revolutions, home the spread, okay. the spread of uh, industrial revolution, industrial revolution, and I think, uh huh, the edge of the revolution is going to be, it's going to start from that. The edge of the of uh, the edge of revolution, and then. The next one that was uh, the spread of revolu revolutionary ideas, and the last one is going to be the industrial revolution. It's going to be three topics. Oh, Bultron, casi me traga. That means that you're hungry. <laughs> okay, chicos. So, uh, industrial, in, in there's going to be three topics. Okay, it's going to be easy. As usual, Tron falls. Very easy for you guys, okay? So get ready for that test, it's gonna be next Monday. Remember, you need to complete the uh, vocabulary and also the assessment questions that are, that belong. No sería el martes, profe, porque usted está diciendo lunes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, yes, you're right, you're right, so, so we say that. Yeah, um, on Tuesday, on Tuesday, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm thinking about the, the other, the other, Ninth grade, so I'm sorry. Yeah, it's on it's on Tuesday, so no problem. Right? Tú tienes una ventaja porque los otros le pueden pasar a ustedes las preguntas, así que así que mejor le voy a crear, le voy a hacer otro ejercicio a ustedes. ¿Qué le parece? Sí, verdad. Mira, le dice que sí. Así como no. Okay, chicos, no vamos a comer, pues. Pórtense bien. Chao, chao. Pórtense bien. Bye, bye.